True. Robin, it was noble of that animal to hurl himself into the path of that final torpedo. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's the Wrestling Life. It's episode 297. It's our WrestleMania weekend show. It's our WrestleMania preview. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about right here on the first and the only wrestling podcast. Oh! Mm-hmm. So much, so much wrestling. Mm-hmm. There's so much wrestling this weekend. It has begun as we are recording this on Thursday night. There's so much to get through. There's so much to get to. I guess let's just start. Umbrella, big picture. And we've already talked about this already off the air. But what are you going to watch this weekend? I think I am going to watch the Joey Janelle Spring Break, at least part one. (laughs) And I am going to watch, uh, which that show has Mickey James versus Alley Catch. I think it has, uh, I think that's the Joey versus X-Pac show. That one's probably the most interesting match to me, maybe of the entire weekend, because like I have very I have a lot of faith that X-Pac could do like a tag match or a Royal Rumble and still look great because, you know, he's not he's shockingly young for how long he's been in (laughs) professional wrestling. And Mm -hmm. uh, but I kind of want to see like what can like a X-Pac at this stage do in a singles match. So and I don't I don't know if I would assume they might use gimmicks and stuff, but who knows? But um but yeah so that show and then i will uh uh, along with a friend of mine be watching the uh the new ring of honor which is looking like a fascinating show so and they're still announcing stuff they're probably announcing stuff while we're recording this show but they just added Rhett titus versus minoru suzuki to that show they have an interim women's title match because uh the ring of honor champion works for impact and (laughs) Uh, they have a show going on at the same time, so or a uh, same night anyway, and uh, so that's that's going to be an interesting. Show. And then you have Bandito and Gresham in the main event. And stop me if you've heard this one before. Uh, Tony Khan promising a big surprise, a big moment at the end of the show. So, oh man, we'll get to Tony in a minute here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to Tony in a minute here. Yeah, Waltman's only 49 years old, to your point. Um, he has not had a singles match in a long time, though. So, yeah, that could be interesting. And then, you know, they're doing their customary battle royal on uh, on the second show where they bring in, like, you know, this year it's Maven and <laughs> uh, Buff Bagwell. <laughs> I just write an article about Buff Bagwell <laughs> in the year of our Lord 2022. What the hell are we doing here? But that's WrestleMania weekend, everybody. Um, lots of stuff going on. All of the indies is running. New Japan is in town. They're running a show. Ring of Honor. The relaunch show that Tony Khan clearly does not want to book, but <laughs> got really into booking. The week of the show. <laughs> yeah, it seems like he was really public about like this wouldn't have been my first choice, but it was already advertised when I bought the company. So I'm doing it. But now he's like, yeah, now he's feels like in the last few days here, he's really trying. <laughs> I should really not say anything about Tony Khan in public. I really, I really shouldn't. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I really shouldn't. Well, um, what do we want to get into here first? Should we cover the non WrestleMania weekend stuff, which I guess would be uh, Dynamite this week before we get into NXT and WrestleMania previews for this weekend? Yeah, that makes sense. Let's uh, let's start there with a uh, I thought a pretty mundane Dynamite, if I'm being honest. It was a weird show. Felt like a lot of felt like they had like six matches announced for it, but every match went really, really long. Um, that's not necessarily a complaint. 
Mm-hmm. Didn't really feel like anything happened. Uh, really no super noteworthy on the show, except uh, Tony Storm debuting, which happy for her. I'm sad for me because now it means I have to go to Dynamite uh, when they come to Baltimore in May. <laughs> I was going to skip that show. Not going to lie. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so Tony Storm debuted. And uh, they kind of continued. Adam Cole, who's already lost world title match, is uh, still going after the world title. And uh, Red Dragon is still going after the tag team titles. And uh, aside from that, uh, the Owen Hart women's tournament is kick- is going to. Well, it's not even the tournament. It's qualifying matches are going to begin. Men's tournament qualifiers begin this week. But Tony Storm debuting was uh, kind of the surprise on the show and uh i expected that it would be her did you yeah i guess i it's funny because i did not realize that it had already been 90 days uh since she refused to travel to baltimore and (laughs) said i would rather not wrestle anymore um than go to go to baltimore um fascinating again with that dynamite coming up but uh yeah i i guess i didn't realize it had been 90 days so it didn't really occur to me obviously the other names the other possibilities were the former ember moon or i my understanding is that uh Nixon Newell, the former former Tegan Knox, has like visa troubles right now. So I don't know if she can get into the country. So it was like, well, if it's not one of them, there aren't, I mean, there were, I'm sure there are other women. I guess it could have been Mia Yim or somebody, but that didn't feel like a a hype signing. That feels like somebody that just shows up <laughs> if they're gonna come in. So uh yeah, I kind of I by process of elimination, and once I was alerted that uh the 90 days were up, I was like, oh well. Who else could it be? I guess. Yeah, the ninety days was the was the tip off for me. It's like that, and the fact that they could have had the former Ember Moon at pretty much at any time <laughs> uh, recently, and uh, for whatever reason, they never came to a deal. So I didn't just didn't seem like there was a whole lot of urgency there. Same thing with me, Yim. Uh, she hasn't been a free agent for her as long. But it seems like, you know, they could have they could have signed her pretty much at any time and they haven't. So, mm-hmm. yeah, just by process of elimination, it's her not the Tony Storm. It was, a, it was a nice, a nice enough debut. Like nobody thought that she was going to lose to the bunny. So I don't think the match had a particularly large amount of heat, but got a big reaction coming out. And it seemed to uh, be a nice moment for her. So, I mean, that's that's solid. Um, it'll be interesting because especially more so with the women i would say than the male stars especially uh they get cycled on and off television if they're not like the tip <laughs> top if they're not Britt baker for the most part you are you're going to be on tv for a little while you'll wrestle on tv pretty regularly and then you will build up to it some sort of title match and assuming you lose you are then wrestling on dark for a while and eventually <laughs> they'll cycle you back onto television But uh, so I'll be interested to see what kind of star they perceive her as uh, compared to maybe how she was relegated in other places she's worked. So that's uh, going to be interesting. They're probably not going to throw food on her because they think she's overweight. (laughs) So there's that. (laughs) Plus, you know, you would have to say that's a plus for her and for anyone that's a fan of hers that they will probably uh, not... Uh, insinuate to her that she needs to lose weight on national television by throwing food at her and not letting her have any sort of comeback to it. What an absolute weird, ugh. low bar. The things that WWE did to her <laughs> were like her first three matches were all under three minutes. Did you know that on the main roster? <laughs> uh, I mean, most matches I feel in the women's division on on modern WWE television are under three minutes, so that tracks. She beat Zelina Vega uh, in less than three minutes in her debut. She and Liv Morgan teamed against Zelina and Carmella in her second match, and they beat them by count out <laughs> in under three minutes. Mm-hmm. And then in the first round of the Queen's Crown tournament, Zelina beat Tony in under three minutes in their third in her third match on the main roster. <laughs> I see. I see. Wow, that's a heck of a way to start. 
it's on it's unreal man it's absolutely unreal yeah so that was uh that was AEW this week um we will see we, at least the world champion has been on tv i guess i'll give them that mm-hmm. uh i'm i'm not super enthused about another um adam cole adam page match not that the match wasn't good not that both of those guys aren't great just not super enthused about that uh program continuing just because it's not something they typically have done mm-hmm. usually you lose your title shot and then it's on to the next challenger and you get cm punk hanging around and making it very clear that he wants to go after the world title <laughs> and mm-hmm. uh but that's probably the the pay-per-view so maybe we get a you know we get a, a world title match on TV here with Adam Cole, and that's that's fine. Yeah, I think they have that that Saturday night show in a couple of weeks here. So I would guess that's where the world title and the tag title and probably Thunder Rosa and Nyla are all going to happen. If I if I had to guess, I think they did three matches on the last one. So, but it is interesting, as you said, that they didn't cycle in a new challenger for Paige and instead just other than that Adam Cole is generally the guy who is most consistently on their television, male or female <laughs> at this point. Um, I guess they need rather than find something else for him to do and find a new challenger for hangman. I haven't looked, not that it matters because you know, the rankings or whatever, but I guess if, if you looked around, I don't know if there was anyone else that's like a better idea, but to your point, they do not usually do immediate rematches. Uh, especially in title programs. So yeah, that is a a change. And I do agree that it does feel at this point, like they've been feuding for a long time and it doesn't feel like there's a particularly large amount of like fire uh, uh, behind, behind that. Not not a lot of heat to that. You know, people like both of those guys and are into their segments together, but it doesn't feel like, Oh man, can't wait to see that, that rematch. It's going to be great. Yeah. All right. Well, NXT is at like uh, one Eastern time on <laughs> Saturday this weekend. Uh, pre-show begins at noon Eastern time. I have to watch NXT every week. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a totally fine show. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'll have to watch this show as well. Uh, it's not as bad as people think it is, but it's also absolutely not a good uh, waste, good use of your time. <laughs> so I can just power through these real quick. Dolph Ziggler defending the NXT title against Braun Breaker, LA Knight facing Gunther, Imperium defending the tag titles against the Creed Brothers and MSK, Mandy Rose defending the women's title against Cora Jade and Dusty Rhodes tag team classic winners Io Shirai and Kaylee Ray, who decided to cash in their Dusty Rhodes tag team classic win by adding themselves to a singles match for the women's title and make it a fatal four-way i don't know man that's Tommaso 99 wcw <laughs> stuff there that's a real galaxy brain book in there i was like whoa and then they went and added a women's tag title match to this show anyway <laughs> <laughs> and reunited raquel gonzalez and dakota kai who have been mortal enemies on television for almost a year now or mm-hmm. whatever so absolutely make no sense whatsoever uh, Tommaso Ciampa will be wrestling the stereotypical uh, Sopranos guy, Tony D'Angelo, <laughs> in the, a five-way ladder match for the North American title with Carmelo Hayes, defending its Santos Escobar, Solis Sokoa, Grayson Waller, and Cameron Grimes. And then on the pre-show, women's tag title match, Toxic Attraction. Why would you name yourself Toxic, by the way? But anyway, <laughs> uh, Gigi Dolan and JC Jane will be defending the tag titles against the reunited Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai, neither of whom are ever getting called up to the main roster. Uh, that's that's maybe the biggest thing. And again, this is me who absorbs NXT mostly through what you tell me about the show or <laughs> through gifts on Twitter. Uh, right. It's like, I feel like we are on like the fourth time that everybody was sure they had written Raquel out of NXT and she was main roster bound imminently and for the fourth time she just kind of came back so i feel like she's she's like the the here's a topical reference the will smith meme like the how come how come they don't want me man like how come like how come they 
they have her in this weird limbo space between where it doesn't seem like she has anything to do in NXT because she was there for two years already. And yet they don't feel like they want her on raw or SmackDown. It's not like they have such a wealth of star power in the, the main roster women's divisions at the moment that they couldn't use a new face, but you know, I guess that's just not what they want to do right now. So anytime I, uh, talk about uh anyone's bodies on this show i'm gonna be referred to as jim ross or something and like i probably deserve that so it's fine but Mm -hmm. raquel gonzalez under the previous uh nxt regime when triple h was in charge Mm -hmm. triple h has a uh has a type what (laughs) and it's uh when i particularly when it comes to lady wrestlers and it's lady wrestlers who can put on muscle yet retain some measure of traditional femininity. Like mm. Rhea Ripley and Raquel Gonzalez. So Raquel Gonzalez's gimmick was basically she had this like um, muscle and fitness look. And this giant like back and traps. So mm-hmm. then the new the new regime comes in, and it's Vince McMahon, Bruce Pritchard, and Kevin Dunn running NXT. Vince really isn't running it though. It's the Bruce Pritchard show. Sure. And and Sean is there to like I, I'm I'm not sure what exactly fill out the paperwork, I think. <laughs> <laughs> He's the office boy. It's definitely how how I would utilize Shawn Michaels if I started <laughs> reading and writing. Yes, <laughs> he puts he puts on his glasses, his reading glasses, and uh, types out the format sheets for the show. <laughs> then anyway, so then so then this new regime takes over, and suddenly there was uh, Raquel Gonzalez like. She goes from having uh, dark hair and cutting half of her promos in Spanish to like having blonde hair. And then she loses like 10 pounds and she loses the muscle and fitness look to the point where there was a match on NXT TV where she was still wearing her old gear from when she was all big and muscly and she kept falling out of the gear and they had to keep blacking the screen out. (laughs) Because she lost so much weight, mm-hmm. it's like this. This is what they've done to her is not so much is not as bad as what they did to Tony Storm, but it, it is just another spotlight on the plight of trying to be a woman in that company. It's horrendous what they've done to her. Yeah, that is that is really fascinating. Like she went from probably one of the even though, again, like you said, she has, I guess you could argue she has a similar body type to Rhea Ripley's, but obviously those two people don't look anything alike. So it's like she went from being one of the more unique looking people on the show to just being, you know, a person on the show. So, yes. And in the process, probably also, yeah, made her life a little bit harder <laughs> as far as yeah. her gear choices and things like that. Yeah. So as far as uh, Santa delivers, is there anything on that show, on that lineup that jumps out at you? Is there anything you're going to watch? Maybe, maybe the main event. Maybe I'd, I'd watch. I've only seen like three Braun Breaker matches. So I want to see like how long they go, what, what, what they do with, uh, with him in a main event singles program. It's, there's only been like 15 Braun Breaker matches ever. <laughs> so it's not like... I've seen a, a sizable percentage in that case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's he's a shock. I mean, it's not shocking. He's a really good athlete mm-hmm. and uses that to cover up for whatever he's not necessarily good at. So he just doesn't. He wrestles like a Steiner. Bruce Pritchard loves this, loved the Steiners. Vince McMahon never knew what to do with the Steiners. <laughs> and, and Bruce is booking... Uh, Braun Breaker like a Steiner, and uh, Vince is not going to know what to do with him one day. So we have right. that to look forward to. <laughs> the Hall of Fame is Friday night. Yeah, after SmackDown. So, yeah, so maybe maybe you get Scott and Rick out there to celebrate with Braun when he wins his belt. And yeah, that would... Rick and Scott Steiner with <laughs> Braun Breaker. 
like I don't care about the names. It's like of among NXT names, at least it's like a memorable thing and it's alliterative. It's fine. But like it is so it is very funny when they go, ah, Rick Steiner's son, who doesn't have the last name Steiner or anything close to it in his name. Not they don't even use like his real name, you know, Rex Steiner or whatever the, the last name right. is. So it's like, right. nope, he's Braun Breaker, the son of two WWE Hall of Famers, or the son of a WWE Hall of Famer <laughs> and the nephew of another WWE Hall of Famer. But we don't call him Steiner for some reason. Yes, they've been trying to um, come up with a Hulk Hogan ripoff name for quite some time, as you can see with Braun Strowman and now Braun Breaker. <laughs> like very, very clearly, they want a Hulk Hogan ripoff name, uh, and they think Braun Breaker is that anyway. Yeah, so the Hall of Fame is Friday night after SmackDown on Peacock. Chad Gaspard is getting the Warrior Award. Steiner Brothers are going to be inducted. Queen Charmel will be inducted by Booker T. Vader will be inducted by Mick Foley. And The Undertaker will be inducted by Vince McMahon. So I think a little bit smaller class this year. I think there's usually a couple of more singles Mm -hmm. stars. It's usually a tag team, a lady wrestler, and then like um, three or four single stars. And this year it's just Vader and uh undertaker so i guess that's a bit of a departure but probably um probably okay but vince and dr the undertaker if we didn't you know have a problem with the undertaker's politics (laughs) and the fact that he didn't ever he stayed about nine years too long as a wrestler Mm mm-hmm um, I think Vince under uh, inducting the Undertaker would at one point would have been a very big deal, and now it's uh, going to happen at like midnight on a Friday night <laughs> and on Peacock, and it doesn't. I'm not sure how big of a deal it's going to be. And this is live, right? Yeah, it's it, it's at the SmackDown taping. So okay, I, yeah, um, yeah, so. Well, it might get like that's the thing with the Hall of Fame the last couple of years is they just did these like really shaved down like and I mean there was no crowds so I kind of understood it but um, I think last year's thing where they just had these really heavily edited like three minute shows where they did their speeches in front of nobody like that Hall of Fame those those sucked so I'm <laughs> I'm excited for these people to get to like have actual speeches and and talk and and enjoy themselves and. And uh, yeah, it's it should be interesting. I was kind of hoping they would get Survivor Jenna to uh, to induct Charmel, but uh, mm. or or Brian and Vinny, but mm-hmm. uh, since neither of those are possible, I guess Booker T is a is a satisfying alternative. I I don't expect as far as like traditional the best part Hall of Fame used to be the highlight of WrestleMania weekend. We mm-hmm. have a bunch of old wrestlers telling old wrestling stories. <laughs> The mm. only person I see doing that this weekend is Mick Foley inducting Vader, and uh, Vader is uh, has passed away, so uh, will not be there to accept his award. Obviously, um, yeah. So that's really the only M- Mick. Mick will do a good job. I I don't know what Booker's going to do inducting Charmel. Mm-hmm. Um. They've not announced who's inducting the signers and Vince. I'm not sure. I'm not a hundred percent confident. Vince always knows where he is. <laughs> well, that'll be interesting. Will Vince cry? Will Vince be under, will you be able to understand what Vince is saying? Will, uh, you know, they, these are the things that you look forward to at the hall of fame. Now, like does does Vince is Vince have enough of his sight left to be able to read a teleprompter. Um, for his for his induction speech or whatever that's these are these are the big questions of this year's hall of fame yeah so vince growl vince growls now he Mm -hmm. no longer speaks he growls so yeah there is that okay well wrestlemania these shows will begin at 8 p.m pre-shows at six i think i think there's two hour pre-shows each night why I'm not entirely sure. No matches on the pre-shows, right? Because they're doing the Battle Royal and stuff on Friday. They may still add. 
They have not announced, but like I get the sense that they may still add pre-show matches. They may put an Intercontinental title match and a U.S. title match on the on these pre-shows. I'm not sure, Got but it. yeah, but it's it's a lot of uh, yeah, going to be a lot of uh, Peter Rosenberg and <laughs> those types of folks, Jerry the King Lawler, I'm sure, mm-hmm. JBL, mm-hmm. all the everyone that everybody likes, Sam Roberts, uh-huh. all the luminaries will be there. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. All right. So uh, night one, Saturday, uh, Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair for the Raw Women's Championship. This has been set up to be Bianca Belair defeating Becky, getting her win back from SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. And we talked about this off the air, but all along. The story has very clearly been outlined as, or been set up as Bianca will vanquish the heel Becky, um, who I think maybe has finally succeeded in getting the crowd to turn on her after all these months. <laughs> Hard Before to tell the, with the crowd sweetening, but yes. Yeah. Oh, there was so much crowd sweetening this past Monday. It was out of control. <laughs> it's <laughs> absolutely out of control. So much canned reaction. Anyway. But I've felt all along that on the day of the show, Vince McMahon is just going to look at Bianca Belair. And he's going to look at Becky Lynch and, he, and he's going to change his mind and have Becky beat Bianca. Yeah, there's and there's no longer the like the Patterson or Briscoe <laughs> that can convince him that Rey Mysterio needs to go over in the Eddie Guerrero tribute match. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> like, like famously, he had to be convinced of that repeatedly. And Ray was supposed to lose the match and then and, and whatever or not even get the match originally. But right. Uh, so I always like and no one there's no one there who's going <laughs> to who's going to make that case for, for him. Shane. <laughs> as if as if who who is there that Vince would care about? Nick Khan doesn't care if Bianca gets her win back or not. No, not at all. Nope, nope. So they had the baby face cut the heels hair on Raw on Monday and the big mm-hmm. go home angle for this. It's a good angle. Yeah. Not 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 sure the psychology of it worked, but <laughs> I thought the psychology was a little backwards. Well, at the very least, Becky brought the scissors into the ring and tried to cut Bianca's hair first, but um, in the in the sense that, like, if you were gonna do that, you'd think, well, why wouldn't you do that after Bianca has beaten her on Sunday? <laughs> yes. Why would you have the the baby face lay out the heel and cut her hair, getting like ultimate revenge over uh, over this? If uh, if the baby face was also going to stand tall on Sun or on Saturday. Uh, which brings you brings us back to your uh, your hypothesis that maybe that's not what's going to happen on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, certainly feels like that's what I would do for the the next show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> would be hair versus hair or whatever, and you don't have to shave either one of them bald. You could you could do the Kevin Nash hair versus hair thing where <laughs> <laughs> Kevin All Nash. Kevin Nash lost a hair match to Chris Jericho and just got a fashionable crew cut out of the deal. That's right. He had to go be in the Punisher movie and play a Russian. So he, yeah, <laughs> we got a, he got a nice crew cut from Chris Jericho. <laughs> tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. <laughs> the Mysterios are wrestling The Miz and Logan Paul. This is your big celebrity match here for night one. I... Um, I don't know how big of a star Logan Paul is. I don't think it matters. Um, you're either going to watch this on Peacock or you're not. I don't think <laughs> there's people that are going to go seek out Peacock because Logan Paul is on the show, but they seem to like him and seem to think he's a big deal. So, okay. Yeah, I mean, in a, in a world where traditional pay-per-view still mattered, like he and his brother's like freak show boxing pay-per-views do numbers, um, but as far as like, yeah, is, is the audience of 12 to 16 year olds who watches him on YouTube going to go sign up for Peacock or get their parents to sign up for Peacock to watch him 
have a wrestling match? I would guess probably not, because if you like Logan Paul, you could probably watch hundreds of thousands of hours of him doing what he actually is known for doing, which I assume is being funny. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Playing, playing. I don't know. He's, I don't know. He's not. A, I don't think he's a video game guy. So like, I don't. I don't know what his shtick is. Other than he that, doesn't, he has of, an old truck he likes to tinker with. <laughs> I know it's either him or his brother. It was because he bought a bunch of Pokemon cards. He's like part of the reason that like targets and Walmarts had to start locking up their trading cards. <laughs> I know he contributed huh. to that um, and the hysteria around that. But uh, yeah, I don't know that much about him, but I just have to imagine that his audience wants to see him do the stuff they already watch him do and not have a wrestling match, or if they do want to watch it, they will watch the clip that will no doubt undoubtedly be on WWE's YouTube channel eight minutes after the match is over. So yeah, I don't know that this matters, but I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. Drew McIntyre versus happy Corbin could not possibly care. I don't dislike either of these guys at this mm-hmm. point. I, I kind of feel for Drew because he like before he worked hurt like the last two months of last year and they were making him work twice every night, mm-hmm. <laughs> like in the, during the holidays. Um, and he's got the old school Bret Hart mentality of, well, they gave me the ball and now I'm going to carry the company on my back. Mm-hmm. And it's like Vince and Nick Khan don't care. And if you were to drop dead tomorrow, they would have a tribute show for you. And then you would, they would take the cog out and put a new cog in and the machine would keep turning Mm -hmm. and they don't care at all. And you came back and you rushed back from an injury and you're wrestling happy Corbin (laughs) who I think has done the best with this ridiculous gimmick as you could possibly do. And he and Matt cat Moss are very funny jerks (laughs) on this show. Mm -hmm. This feels like a SmackDown match, like at nine o'clock though on you know, on a typical Friday night and not a WrestleMania feud. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of all there is to say about it. I think that's uh, nothing against either guy. They've, they were really trying to hit that Corbin hasn't been pinned in like since last <laughs> summer or something, which I mean, fine. I guess, I guess you're trying <laughs> to make this mean something when, when Drew beats him in six minutes. Great. But yeah, as far as a WrestleMania match, this is definitely like the the British Bulldog versus the Warlord of this show. Sure. Yeah. And I think Corbin s- stole Drew's sword on the go on the go on the uh, last week's SmackDown. Ah, the sword so that like, named after his late mother, Angela. Angela. Yes. <laughs> so Thank my- you, Michael Cole. <laughs> On Monday's show, I was like, why is Michael Cole here? Like, mm. Jimmy, Jimmy, what's his face is fine. But I was very happy he was there because when Drew came out to do a handicap match against Corbin and uh, Lonnie Donegan, uh, <laughs> he, we got to hear Michael Cole talk about how the sword is named after his late mother, Angela. And I, there's certain things that I just only Michael Cole <laughs> can do that justice. You need, you need to bring in the ringer for those those big, important lines like about how drew mcintyre has a sword named after his late mother angela yes it, yes <laughs> it just shows you the mindset there though that like vince doesn't trust jimmy smith on the go home show for wrestlemania mm-hmm. he's got to bring in michael by god cole <laughs> that's right yeah we need the, the professionals it's like uh when they they hated Jim Ross, but they kept bringing him back because he also hated Joey Styles. Yeah, he hated Joey Styles more than he hated jo- Jim Ross. Yes. And think of the ground that covers. <laughs> yeah, I still need the Jim Ross and McMahon relationship psychoanalyzed <laughs> <laughs> and explained to me. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. From both uh, ends, honestly. <laughs> a thousand percent. Yes. Yes. Um, also at, on night one of WrestleMania, the Usos will be defending the tag titles against Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs. The best part of SmackDown over the past several months has been the series of like Toyota Tundra commercials <laughs> that aired during the show with Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs like going on adventures together and the mm-hmm. new Toyota Tundra. And those came to an end last week, which was really sad because... <laughs> They were such wonderful personality pieces for both these guys who were not especially in character mm-hmm. during them. 
and they're just hanging out and like going kayaking and Nakamura took boogs surfing and they're just going on and they're camping and they're going on all sorts of adventures in their new Toyotas. And um, they should drive to the ring in a Toyota Tundra. <laughs> <laughs> that should they be should. the payoff to all of this. It, it honestly, I would, I would rather watch Nakamura, a Nakamura and boogs travel show. <laughs> than than, sm- than SmackDown most weeks. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, no, I, I can see why that would be <laughs> that would be more enjoyable. Yeah. So anyway, the Usos are like part of the the top act on the show. So I don't think they're losing they're losing the tag titles to Nakamura and Boots. I mean, this is another case of like they could because like if they don't lose to them, who are they gonna lose to? <laughs> The answer is probably at some point Drew McIntyre will be in a tag team with another semi main event guy and then and then they'll win them or something. But uh, yeah, I don't like they could. But uh, yeah, probably, probably not. If I had to guess. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that we've talked about Butch on this show yet, have we? I can't remember. <laughs> I don't think so. So Pete Dunn is Butch now. <laughs> he sure is. I think Biggie's broken neck overshadowed the Butch debut, so I think we missed talking about it. Even though we did a show that week, but yes, he's he's Butch now. He's got a little hat and yep. suspenders. Yep, a lot of suspenders on this show. Just yep, <laughs> yep. A uh, Mad Cat Moss often wears suspenders. Uh, mm-hmm. Baron Cor- Happy Corbin often wears suspenders. Yes, uh, I feel like Boogs. At some point, has worn suspenders. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's you, definitely the Seamus crew all, all in, all in suspenders. Yes. So, by the way, Michael Cole informed us that Ridge Holland and Seamus grew up with Butch in the <laughs> pubs of Dublin, Ireland. It's <laughs> by Seamus being like 42, and Pete. Pete <laughs> Pete Dunn being like 25. Oh man, it's fantastic. I love I just love BS like that. Like it's so <laughs> demonstrably not true. Not even from like the same country. Uh right. but, but somehow they hung out in the pubs of Dublin, Ireland. But, Butch is is English. Mm-hmm. Rich Holland is English. Seamus is the only Irish guy in the bunch. <laughs> And but they all grew up in the pubs of, of Dublin, Ireland together. Seamus is 44, Ridge Holland is 33, Pete Dunn is 28. <laughs> so when Ridge and Pete were like 18 and 13, <laughs> respectively, Seamus, <laughs> 26 year old Seamus was there. Hanging, hanging out, out with, with kids, with Ridge and Butch. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Oh. It was such an amazing Michael Cole moment. <laughs> Oh man, you just don't get grade A BS like that. Like this was all again very commonplace in like previous eras of the World Wrestling Federation. But I love a, I just love a line like that. It's just like, oh come on, this is immediately and demonstrably <laughs> impossible. Yes, <laughs> but Michael Cole's just gonna just gonna soldier on ahead and say that on every show for uh, for as long as this gimmick <laughs> exists until they fire one or all of them. <laughs> yes. So those poor guys, Seamus and Ridge with Butch, are uh, wrestling uh, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston uh, in a tag match on night one of WrestleMania. Okay, <laughs> like I think they've literally done this, literally done this match. No, they haven't because Woods just came back and wrestled for the first time like two weeks ago or something. Mm-hmm. But very much a SmackDown match. Agreed, and yeah, like you would think again. Uh, being able to build on the revenge that Kofi and Woods would be seeking for their friend having their neck broken by one of these guys that maybe it would have a little little heat behind it. But no, I couldn't have told... Uh, if you had asked me to name them WrestleMania card, I probably could have named every match we've talked about so far, but this one I would not have remembered was even happening. Yep. Yep. They really haven't hit it very hard. Um, Seth freaking Rollins will be wrestling a an opponent of Mr. McMahon's choosing that Mr. McMahon will announce as Rollins is in the ring. So it's probably Cody Rhodes. <laughs> Unless it's but it could, that. <laughs> but it could be 
it could be someone else. <laughs> could, yeah. could, could be Shane McMahon. He's allegedly in town this weekend. They could do the old swerve switcheroo. I saw, I wish I could credit whoever I saw tweet this, but I can't remember. So someone tweeted, there will be a capital like insurrection at WrestleMania if, <laughs> if it's Shane McMahon and not Cody Rhodes. Uh, who comes out to wrestle Seth. But that was the original WrestleMania match before mm-hmm. Shane got himself fired after the Royal Rumble. <laughs> he got himself fired for being such a jerk at the Royal Rumble and being mean to Jamie Noble <laughs> backstage. <laughs> and uh, and booking himself as the star of the Royal Rumble and making Brock Lesnar mad. Uh, he got himself fired, but before he got himself fired, he was going to be in an elimination chamber match at, in Saudi Arabia, mm-hmm. which was somehow going to lead to Seth Rollins versus Shane McMahon at WrestleMania. And now Shane's going to be in town. Don't expect him to be on the show, but if you wanted to make people mad, which is something that they often want to do, <laughs> they often you would have Shane come out and wrestle Seth, and then you would debut Cody the next night on raw yeah (laughs) like i and which i think as someone who has long since given up on expecting to be like truly really enjoying a a wwe show (laughs) uh you look for the funny and what could possibly be funnier than if shane mcmahon's music hit when everyone is expecting the biggest and really first real aew defection to wwe uh, in in the couple of years, like what could be better than if everyone is expecting Cody Rhodes? Once Cody Rhodes is ready to explode, they're all hot and bothered for Cody, and and then here comes the money place. Like it would be amazing. This might be the first time people throw things in the ring, <laughs> yeah, like a really long time. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. You can't rule it out. You can't rule it out because they love to f with people. They love to swerve people for no reason other than people found out the plans, and so they have to swerve them. It would be a very WWE thing to do. Like when they were going to debut Christian at that one WrestleMania against Jeff Hardy, (laughs) and people, some people sort of figured it out by process of elimination. And so they're like, never mind, we're going to turn Matt Hardy into a program everyone, including the people involved, hate. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, that's what they did. Yeah, yeah. Christian, you have to wrestle Jack Swagger on ECW (laughs) because the internet found out. I mean, it led to a run of Christian being the best wrestler in that company by a wide margin. True, true. He and Regal just like (laughs) they made a they made a pact to only wrestle each other for like six months, and uh, yeah, and then Christian also got matches out of guys like Matt Cardona and Yoshitatsu who have never had matches that good again in their careers. Ezekiel Jackson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So glad we're talking about 2009 ECW. (laughs) Definitely good use of both of our time. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So there's two things left on the Saturday night WrestleMania card. And depending on who you believe, one of the two will go on last. There's the KO show with Kevin Owens and Steve Austin. Mm -hmm. What's this going to be? Is it going to be a match? (laughs) Is it going to be like the John Cena Undertaker match at WrestleMania where Austin knows he really can't go? And so they do like a five minute thing where he does a couple spots or does he take his shirt off? That's really what I care about. Or is he really, you know, is he going to try to do a match? What is this going to be? Well, that's because because they've obviously they've made the choice to not put Steve on TV, <laughs> right? Like. Hell of a choice, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he did the one like video, you know, program from his palatial estate. He just um, couldn't be arsed to show up <laughs> even one time. Right. So and I wondered, I was like, well, maybe it's because he's in like great, great shape and they and he's going to come out in gear and they didn't want to like tip their hand with that. And so he's going to come out in the black trunks and the black boots and the vests. And then part of me was like, or maybe he doesn't look that great because even <laughs> if you're in really great shape for a 53 year old man, you still maybe don't look like you did 25 years ago. Right. Uh, maybe he is like, I need every second of every day 
me <laughs> to do <laughs> to do crunches and eat eat steamed chicken and broccoli and <laughs> right and just work out constantly to try to get ready for this. So to me, <laughs> it could be any number of a thousand things. But my thought is either. <laughs> They think he looks great and they're going to do something and they think, well, won't this be a wonderful surprise? Or they're like, give him every possible second of every single week until this match is in the ring or fight or talking segment, <laughs> whatever it's going to be exactly. Uh, uh, give him every possible second pos- uh, that you can, you can give him to get, let himself get cosmetically ready for this. Right. Yeah. 57 years old, man. Like, mm-hmm. it's also a guy that never let himself really get out of shape. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it will be very interesting to see. So, either that's going on last or Charlotte Flair defending the SmackDown women's title against Ronda Rousey is going on last uh, on night one of WrestleMania. Charlotte and Ronda. They have no real no real reason to be fighting one another. The heat was always Becky and Rhonda. Mm-hmm. Becky was already in a program. So they got Charlotte and Rhonda, and they've tried to heat them up. They've tried to do some angles. They tried to do a backstage brawl in a parking lot. Mm-hmm. They played the hits. They've really tried. To me, it's just the psychological aspect of the feud is not there because there's no reason for these two to be fighting one another. <laughs> Rhonda's, Rhonda's deep desire to be the SmackDown women's champion. That's, that's what we're selling this on. I suppose. I suppose. I'm sure they will have a spectacle. Like Rhonda, yeah. I, don't th- I don't think Rhonda's looked particularly good in the ring since she's been back. But... I'm sure they will. Uh, they will have a spectacle. Yeah, I mean, Charlotte ain't, af- ain't afraid to throw live rounds, as it were, in, yep. in there. And I'm sure they'll hit each other really hard. And generally speaking, if she's in there with the right person, Charlotte has really, really good matches. So I don't know about putting this on last. It doesn't feel like it has the juice behind it. But uh, you know, if you're looking at this Saturday card, other than I guess a non-match in the Steve Austin thing. What else would you put on last? It's not a well, not a heavy hitting show. No, it's either this or, or Becky and Bianca, which really has seven months of story behind it and should be last. <laughs> I guess I, like that one. I th- like I said, I think they they've at least had some angles with some juice behind them with right. with Becky trying to cut her hair and pilmanizing her neck and all that stuff. So they've at least done some stuff that i think is a little more memorable and i the crowd was into it when bianca got her hands on becky and they were kind of brawling back and forth on on monday so yeah i would i would be fine with either of those going on last but i would and maybe i would lean more towards the the becky bianca one but you know you're paying you're paying around a lot of money i do agree with you that it doesn't quite have that doesn't quite have made of a wrestlemania heat either I do agree with you there. No, I mean, you could argue that, like, I mean, the build for Bianca and Sasha wasn't, like, five stars either last year, and that went on last, and they killed it. So, yeah, like, once they get in the ring, they could make it feel like a, you know, a WrestleMania main event. But, yeah, nothing on this Saturday show other than Steve Austin coming back to do <laughs> something <laughs> feels particularly <laughs> WrestleMania or main event worthy to me based on the build for it. Yeah. All right. Night two of Mania. Uh, four way for the women's tag titles Zelina and Carmella defending against Sasha and Naomi, Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan, and Natty and Shayna Baszler. It's, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a it's gonna be a match. I love how Natty always finds herself a random partner on these <laughs> on these shows. <laughs> it's not quite as random as the Carmella and Billy Kay pairing from last year's. <laughs> Or was it Lana and Billy? K? I don't know. I remember Lana and Billy K being in the ring together and it being amazing <laughs> last year. Know, but uh, anyway, I just I love I always love there's always like a random team to get because they don't do a battle royal for the women anymore. So right. uh, <laughs> the <laughs> Snickers bullied them into not naming it after a known terrible person. Fabulous. There's no one else 
<laughs> There's no other famous female wrestlers they could have named that sh- that battle royal after, so they just don't do it anymore. Hey. <laughs> the internet tattled to Snickers. <laughs> What an amazing turn of events all of that was. Incredible. We already have this thing named after Mae Young, so we can't name another thing after Mae mm-hmm. Young. Yeah, we can't call it. We're still yeah. mad at Alundra Blaze. Yes. 40 years later and only bring her back when we want to <laughs> talk about the trash can thing again. Right. So we're not naming anything after her. Uh and Trish and Lita, I guess, are too too young to have something named after them. I don't, I don't know. They put Sherry Martell in their Hall of Fame. Like, oh yeah, Sherry. Mm. I'm sure there's some reason like they don't want to pay Sherry's family royalties or something, <laughs> though, right? I don't know. Anyway, not that they pay people royalties. <laughs> no, that doesn't really happen anymore. <laughs> well, they pay them royalties. They just like if you if they use your name your footage that you don't get paid for that which mm-hmm. cm punk has made a big deal about i don't know how that works anyway all right so other anyway here on us now we've talked about sherry martell on the show also <laughs> johnny knoxville is wrestling sammy Zayn in an anything goes yes. match everything johnny knoxville's done has been great this is um, the main event of wrestlemania really should be <laughs> if we're being honest you know he's gonna do something insane like they'll do thumbtacks or mm-hmm. he'll set himself on fire or and they'll, Just something they'll bring absolutely out the, insane. the jackass peanut gallery uh, to to take bumps through tables and all all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, we'll be fine. Uh, no reason Johnny Knoxville can't go over here. Mm-hmm. You should come, and then they should do in the main event. They should redo WrestleMania Nine, where Paul Heyman throws ceremonial salt in Brock Lesnar's <laughs> eyes and is defeated by the Samoan champion only for Johnny Knoxville to come out like Hulk Hogan, hopefully in the same outfit, <laughs> the, the red tights and the yellow cowboy boots and, and win the title in, in, a, in a minute from, uh, from Roman. That's how, that's how I would end WrestleMania if I were booking it. Or why not Pat McAfee and Austin theory in a singles match, Pat, another guy who is probably low key, the best hire the company's ever made. <laughs> He gives him like some mainstream credibility. I find him a little grating on commentary when it's like a five hour pay-per-view, but mm-hmm. it's for, for two hours on SmackDown every Friday night, he's great at that. And he and Cole like seem to genuinely like working with each other. Like there's an energy to Michael Cole with Pat McAfee that makes him a little less of a mutant WWE <laughs> freak. <laughs> yes. When he's there with Pat. Yes. Yes. Remember, was it Cole who tried to get Pat McAfee fired for wearing shorts at the WrestleMania in New York? Do you I remember think that? so. I think so. I think he was he was demanding Pat change, and then Pat showed Vince McMahon a picture of LeBron James wearing shorts with a jacket, and Vince decided it was all right. Yes. <laughs> anyway, everyone's cool now. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, amazing story. Um, the Raw tag titles and the triple threat. RK Bro versus the Street Profits versus Af- Alpha Academy. It feels like the Street Profits are going heel. I'm not sure why. It feels like all we have on any of these shows are heels, but RK Bro, I hope they don't break them up. It just feels like, of course, they're going to break them up at some point because that's all they do. Mm-hmm. Anyway, these teams have been wrestling each other for six months. And I'm sure we'll wrestle each other for six months more. <laughs> yeah, especially now that the draft's not until like October or whatever. Yeah. Like there's a lot of time where there's and there's only three teams. I mean, I guess they could call call people up or as we saw with someone like Big E, they'll just move them for no reason. But yeah. Not a yeah, not not super enthused about this. But yeah, if RK Bro are staying together for the time being, well. You can have the newly heel Street Profits win the belts and then those guys chase them for a while. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Edge and AJ Styles in a singles match. Oh, there's been some acting in this feud. <laughs> I can't believe I have to watch Malachi Black on two different shows now. <laughs> that's, that's all I think about when I watch these vignettes with the spooky mood lighting and Edge in a suit uh, maniacally laughing. 
Edge did to try to do an angle on the suit and tore his jacket. Did you see that? <laughs> I think I missed that. I saw saw the angle. That was when he beat up AJ on on last week's show. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I think I, I don't think I saw that. I, I I was just oh, that's right. I fell asleep during that show. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I saw he... I, I saw him hit AJ with the chair as I was kind of waking up, and I was like, all right, yeah, that's I got it. <laughs> yeah, he t- he tore the jacket. Yeah. <sighs> Anyway, AJ Edge to me in this run co- comes off as a guy who probably did not watch a lot of wrestling in the however many years he was gone. Mm-hmm. Came back and is having matches that he would have had 12 years ago, mm-hmm. but he's 12 years older. And we've all seen a lot of wrestling in the 12 years since, and the style has kind of changed. And it feels like maybe he didn't change with the times is my point. And so I find all of his effort and his character work, I think it's hit or miss, but I appreciate the effort that he puts into it. I don't particularly appreciate his matches. (laughs) Yes, I, I would say from a character standpoint, if you watch Edge's promos as melodramatic and acty as they are, Good God, he's trying. He's yes. trying to inject some life and get the crowd to make noise and get the crowd to care about AJ Styles, who was a heel for like two years and then suddenly was a baby face one week. And like he's trying. He's trying really hard to get people to care about this and about his new character. He changed his music. Like he's doing all of the things you're supposed to do when you're doing a big character change to get people to care and get people to accept the new character and all that. But yeah, the thing is, and this is a recurring theme for me, and again, with WWE programming, is there are people that I think are doing their best and can be entertaining. But generally speaking, I think that uh, the point of talking on a wrestling show should be to lead to a wrestling match that I want to see. And uh, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't particularly want to see uh, you know, an Edge who has had probably one really good match, maybe two if you count the the weird performance center Orton match with the piped in noise and, and then the Seth match in Saudi Arabia uh, since he's been back and AJ who is still serviceable, but it's not the AJ styles of even three or four years ago. It's like, yeah, this is, they're probably going to get like 20 minutes and they're going to do some acting <laughs> during yeah. it. And there's going to be chin locks and it's going to feel like maybe a 2007, like, a, and that's maybe the, the main thing is like, man, Edge wrestled AJ Styles in like 2007. Be, cre- be incredible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as it stands now, uh, I'm sure it'll be all right, but it also won't be particularly enthralling for me. Yep. Bobby Lashley versus Omos. The main event of the show for me. <laughs> <laughs> Is this what we've been leading to? We're going to, f- Omos has been not taken off his feet for two years, much less pinned, and now he's. He's going to lose to big Bob Lashley. I figured he was going to beat Bob Lashley mm-hmm. and Omas is going to wrestle the champion at some point here, <laughs> but I don't know that to be true. Yeah. I mean, genuinely, generally speaking, if they were like a wrestling company, you'd go, well, Bobby Lashley is already a made man, whatever he's going to be on this show. Right. He won't be any higher or lower on the card if he wins or loses this match. So Omas should win. And then, when it is time for Omos to lose, you should have, uh, let's say, a Braun Breaker or somebody new or somebody that is lower on the card that you are trying to elevate be the one to beat him. But also, that's not really how they did that. You know, John Cena was Rusev's first loss, for instance. Like sometimes they just go, all right, we don't know what to do with you if you're undefeated anymore. So right. uh, we don't want to put you over the top, top guys. So we're just going to have somebody beat you so we can tell our stories yep and they have been super 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 into protecting bobby lashley for the last several years and like hey great Mm -hmm. it's nice that there's somebody they protect (laughs) (laughs) but it's like besides roman and brock the closest thing to a protected character well i guess becky to a degree too but aside from the those three who are the three big main stars of the company the next closest thing to a protected character is bobby lashley for sure. And they haven't done 
this version of Lashley versus this version of Roman yet. That's like, I feel like the yeah. last big full-time <laughs> match between two full-timers they might have in their pocket. Yeah, that makes sense. And then uh, capping night two, winner takes all championship unification match. The biggest WrestleMania match of all time. Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns for both titles. Well, <sighs> feels like feels like I've seen this headline 15 WrestleManias or mm-hmm. SummerSlams. I was going to look up uh, how, how many, but I've, <laughs> I think it's only the second WrestleMania, but third Hang wrestlemania on. third wrestlemania right because they did the 30 they, well yeah yeah they did the the 31 the new and new orleans then, uh, one yeah mm-hmm. yeah and then uh the second new orleans one and then this one right um but they've done at least one summer slam with it also yes um, and a couple of saudi shows yes but the roles are reversed this time and roman's a heel and brock's baby face <laughs> I will give Roman Reigns a lot of credit. I did not think Brock was good on the go home show. I like, Oh, he wasn't good at all. Um, and, <laughs> but Roman to his credit did, I thought the best job of trying to sell me on this as a professional wrestling match that I would want to see in that he left the shtick at the door. Right. He didn't do any of his catchphrases. He didn't, I mean, there's a couple shots of Paul gazing lovingly at him, but that's fine. <laughs> um, but he tried to cut this promo and explain why. Yes, we have wrestled each other 86 times. Yes, I have <laughs> beaten him multiple times, but I've never beaten him at WrestleMania. And the last time we wrestled at WrestleMania, he busted me open and made my kids cry, made my wife. It's more of a baby face promo. But he, he at least gave tried to give you a reason. Made my wife and kids cry. Made my dad doubt me, and and so I have to to prove I'm the greatest of all time. I have to beat, but I have to beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. So I was like, all right, like it's still a match I've seen a lot and I've seen at WrestleMania a lot. But he tried really hard to give you like, here's why it's different this time. Here's what's on the line besides the two belts and who could care about the two belts. So he did try to give us a reason to care about this match. I thought uh, outside of the shtick of it just being, well, these are the only, these are the two top guys and we have nothing else in our pot in our back pocket. So they have to wrestle each other again. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I think I was really excited for this somehow like three weeks ago. (laughs) And then I think maybe they had Brock around a little too often building up to this and they didn't do enough different kind of angles. Um, They'd have Brock but, drive a forklift into them at one point. Yeah, they they had to WWE it up. That's, that was very <laughs> much the NWO drives a truck into the Rock's ambulance where it's yeah. like, OK, we're getting a little too uh, a little too inventive here. Yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, but we'll see. We'll see what we'll see what happens here. Uh, I'm. I think. I think they'll. It's going to be the the Paul Heyman match layout, which I thought I was bored of, where they just hit each other with finishers and mm-hmm. maybe their their whatever their secondary finisher is, they just hit those moves over and over and over again. Um, but last time I saw one of those matches, it was really great. Uh, so I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will try and. Roman doesn't take a lot of bumps no more. So <laughs> I'm I'm sure he's going to take some bumps. So that's yeah. good. Yeah, I'm sure it won't be for lack of effort. If this is good or bad, <laughs> yeah. they're going to hit each other hard. They're going to do a lot of suplexes and punches and spears and F5s. And and I would guess one or maybe both of them will bleed. So um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're going to try to have a a WrestleMania main event wrestling match. And hopefully it's great. Roman's got to win, right? Like Brock might make Roman bleed so that he can keep his heat because he's mm-hmm. been saying he's coming for blood, but Roman has to win, right? I would think so. Just if you're going to do this unification thing, who knows how long it'll last, but if you're going to do it for the time being. Like, I don't know, Brock again, my, my thought has always been if you have Roman reigns, win for two years kind of what i just said with almost like why would you 
Brock is Brock. Like Brock right. gets nothing out of beating Roman Reigns or really losing to Roman Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> and Brock is the same either way because everybody loves like everybody loves Brock. I mean, he's he's the best. But I, so to me, the idea of Brock being the one to finally beat Roman would be anticlimactic. So yeah. for that reason, I would not that I think like Dwayne is is a better option. <laughs> I know we're we're still crossing our fingers for next year's Mania in LA that he's gonna we're gonna get Dwayne fifty three year old Dwayne or whatever to do that show, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, in the meantime, I don't know. <laughs> My other thought is though, if Roman doesn't, if Roman doesn't lose, who the hell is he going to wrestle when Brock goes home? <laughs> They've well, got I get, nobody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I get, you know, if Lashley beats Omos, they could do that. Mm. Yeah. If Omos beats Lashley, they could do that. Boy, does that sound like a bad match. <laughs> oh man. Like Lashley, Lashley, you know, can still do all his power stuff, mm-hmm. and is like looks like a looks like an action figure, even though he's like forty six years old now. So, <laughs> um, yeah, they would they would have they would have some interesting matches, I think. But oh, oh man, Omas against the Roman who doesn't want to take bumps. Ooh boy, <laughs> ooh boy, a lot of squeezing, a lot of squeezing. Mm-hmm. And- Choking with the boot in the corner, and uh, what what else did Kali do? Uh, <laughs> a lot of big, like Big John Stud bear hug submissions mm. in the oh, middle of the yeah. ring. Now we're talking. Oh, oh man! All right, a couple other miscellaneous things here. Uh, so that's WrestleMania. Enjoy the shows, everybody. A couple other miscellaneous things here. Uh, Trish Stratus works from Toronto and Kitchener, Ontario house shows this past weekend. Um, teasing matches with Becky Lynch. Can't wait for those. Not sure it ever happens, but uh, I was excited about the possibility of WWE match. And you're like, I can't believe you you can still get excited about <laughs> WWE matches. <laughs> I I I said I am envious, yes, of your ability to still get excited <laughs> over any match that WWE puts on. Um, so I mean, I gotta tell you, if they did like Brock versus Elmos, I'd be into that. I think I'd be into that. Oh, um, this is a- Brock versus a big stinky giant who's been yelled at for two years. You're a giant. Don't leave your feet. Don't sell for anybody. And then yep. he gets in there with a guy who doesn't give a crap, but anyone's told anyone and is just going to do his thing. Like when he bullied Braun for three years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the Brock I love. So like that kind of stuff, the stuff that would be darkly humorous, like, if, or if Cody comes in as the new hot baby face and they put him with like happy Corbin, that would be funny to me. I'd be yes. kind of excited for that, but yes. not in a way of like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to see this. <laughs> can't wait yes. to see the segments on television. I bet it's going to be great. So I'm, I'm very happy for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Trish brought her, uh, her cowboy hat gimmick back. So that was cool. <laughs> and then uh, Triple H did a, uh, did an interview with Stephen A. Smith where he talked about how he almost died. Mm-hmm. And, but now he's back and he's uh, just focused on, he's not, uh, I don't get the sense that he's in the office every day, mm-hmm. uh, but he's Just back. He, he's scouting talent, mm-hmm. and uh, I guess he's in the the regal role now. I guess officially, that's his his role. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, I we knew it was really serious. Yes, but I don't think we knew that he almost died. Yeah, or that like he had a what you call it, a pacemaker put in and yeah and or yeah. uh defibrillator yeah. defibrillator yeah sorry um yeah he was uh in that that rough of shape yeah i i, I think it was pretty clear because like it's never good when a person in their late 40s early 50s has a heart problem yeah um and especially not one that uh, uh allegedly may have had uh, chemically enhanced his body over the years um, you can't yeah. imagine that ends well for a guy like that, but yeah, I mean, the way he laid it out was like, I was very close to death and, you know, tr- started thinking when he was in the hospital about what's he ever going to see his daughters again and things like that. And it's like, Oh, okay. Well, that's, that makes it a little more real. Like it's, it's, it's very fun to poke fun at Paul Levesque, the backstage politician and Paul Levesque, the executive, but you know, nobody wants nobody wants to see a 
kids grow up without their father. So that's, yeah, it put, it, it was a little sobering to hear him talk about it. Yeah. And not to make this macabre or whatever, but my other takeaway from that, we talk about guys who are in the early fifties or late forties and early fifties who may have chemically enhanced their bodies over the years. Mm-hmm. All I could think about was the rock. <laughs> it's, mm. like, it's like that guy is absolutely gigantic. And I think he just turned 50 or 49, mm-hmm. maybe. And it's just like, Oh boy. And again, I, I think, I think if you're that level of celebrity and you want to put chemicals in your body, you probably could go to a doctor mm-hmm. and have a doctor tell you how to do it as safely as possible. Right. But, but it's still not good for you long term, particularly if you were around and doing stuff 25 years ago mm-hmm. when we were still in like the horse steroids era of guys doing bodybuilding drugs, you know, like mm-hmm. yeah. my takeaway from that Triple H thing was, oh, boy, I don't want to be the, the Rock's cardiologist <laughs> the next three, three, four years, you know? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good point. He is he is not getting smaller <laughs> in, nope. his, in his older age here. He is getting, if anything, he's bigger than he's ever been. So, yeah, probably. Just generally, I mean, you, and you just look at that, like how that can wreak havoc on your, like your joints and your knees and your things like that, much less your heart <laughs> or, yeah. or, you know, your liver or things like that, that uh, could just some one day go, nope, too much. Uh, especially, yep. And when you're 50 and you're sleeping like three hours a night and working out 18 hours a day and whatever, it's like at a certain point, your body's probably just going to go. Nope, can't do this anymore. <laughs> yeah. I I'm Hogan is 68 now. And it's like I'm really pretty shocked Hogan's never had like at least that we know of ever had like a serious heart problem. <laughs> kind of amazing, right? Like Yep. 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 All right. Well, we've covered the entire world here. Speculated about the heart conditions of the Rock and Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All we've covered uh, the NXT show this weekend, the WrestleManias, both nights of WrestleMania. Um, final prediction: Cody Rhodes, WrestleMania or Raw after WrestleMania? Mm. This is the this is the head versus the heart here because. <laughs> In my heart of hearts, I want Shane McMahon's music to hit at WrestleMania and watch there be like just just a visceral, angry reaction from a crowd of 55,000 people. We Um, always root for chaos. Yes, that's right. That's right. So my heart wants that more than anything. But my head says not at this point. I still have somehow too much faith in Vince McMahon to uh, to go that far with his despite how much he clearly hates his own audience i just can't imagine someone could talk to this maybe if there hadn't been the story about how he fired shane <laughs> like if shane was in the good graces i can see him convincing himself that oh, oh people shane mcmahon's a big star those the fans will go crazy for him but it's like he knows shane sucks <laughs> He hates Shane. And really, it's not about who's a big star to the audience. It's about who's a big star to Vince. And I think at this point, Cody Rhodes might be a bigger star to Vince than his own son. So I think it's going to be Cody, but good God, do I want it to be Shane. Same. (laughs) Same. All right. Enjoy the weekend, everyone. There's all kinds of non-WWE wrestling going on. There's all kinds of WWE wrestling going on. So there's something for everyone. And until next time, everybody, I meet. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features.
There we are. There it is. What are we, what are we drinking tonight? Uh, Coke Energy. It's the uh, final count. It's the final countdown. <laughs> I mean, are you on the? Are you rationing it, or are you just kind of? Did you just stock up so much that you're? Well, I think there's like uh, I think I have eleven left now. Mm. <laughs> so I am rationing to a degree. Mm-hmm. And for what we know, this these may be the last eleven cans in the continental United States. <laughs> that is that is correct. Yes, they. Uh, yes, they. I think they're still making it internationally, so I may have to import it <laughs> once in a while. Uh, sounds expensive to do on a regular basis, but for treat day, maybe I bring in some <laughs> Coke energy. <laughs> we're not well, fancy folk here but you know why we like to import some <laughs> coca-cola energy drink products so terrible <laughs> you got arrested for importing coke <laughs> <laughs> no but it's not that cool it doesn't, it's not nearly as cool as it sounds no it was coke energy <laughs> i try to keep on keeping on 